Okay, so I will get up my slide here. Thought I would start with this one and, uh, you know, if you can make it out okay, what we're looking at, of course, is a, a mirage. So what can you tell me about mirages? How do they work? They're in your mind. They give you a false. Mm -hmm. They give you a false sense of something. Yeah, yeah, and I thought you know, it's interesting how they look real from a distance, um, but and if you're not careful, you can pursue, you know, what what what's far off, and then when you get to it, you realize it wasn't real, and you've wasted your effort. And I think that's sometimes how things go in life. You know, we look for things that we think might fulfill us, and we find in the end that maybe they weren't real or, or so great once we get them. But uh, so, you know, again, last week we, we talked about telling the truth, and, and this week we're really talking about discerning whether we're hearing the truth. And, uh, you know, it's interesting how sometimes things look. Uh, real, but they're not. And I, I really have always said that I, I, I think God designed a lot of things into nature that would teach us and show us lessons. And so, you know, mirages are kind of an interesting lesson. And I think uh, another one is just how many times there are lookalikes in, in life. You know, Lynette has a, a garden she likes to plant. And it's funny when you plant something, whether it be raspberries or mint uh, once it starts growing there's a weed that will grow along with it that looks like the plant but it's really just a weed and it doesn't bear fruit and so you know sometimes we have to use discernment uh, to tell the difference between what's real and, and what isn't and so with that I thought I would jump into some scriptures and you know we've got quite a few scriptures here that will I guess, just warn us about uh, things that are out there to deceive us. Um, but we're going to end on a positive note here tonight, too. So, uh, But to get started here in 1 John, it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world, and by this you know the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And so, um, you know, there are spirits that are in the world and they're not all good, right? And so we know that there are things that would uh, operate in that realm, but not necessarily be of God. And we know this verse probably in the Book of Mormon, it says that uh, in all things, there is an opposite or an opposition. And so that's sort of how, uh, how things work. And we have to tell the difference between the two. And that's certainly uh, true in the spiritual realm. Uh, you know, there's a good spirit, but then there's also opposing, uh, an opposing spirit that we have to look for. And in our day and age, uh, if you interpret that we're in uh, latter days or thereabouts, um, there's quite a few prophecies that would warn us in particular about that era of time, uh, that there would be many things that would come uh, kind of in that last fight, if you will, for the, um, uh, the souls of mankind that a great struggle at that time would occur. And so here it says that if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And so there's a particular warning that sort of repeats about the latter days, that in, in those days, particular things will um, happen that would be perhaps very compelling or deceiving, but we have to really be on guard and be able to discern between what is 
truly of Christ and, and what is just trying to mimic, uh, sort of like those weeds in the garden. Um, anyone think of a, an example in scripture where uh, that, I mean, that sort of thing has happened or has that happened before? Or is this, would this be the first time this is, this sort of thing has occurred? Satan trying to mimic God. Yeah. Yeah, it's not the first time, is it? No. Um, in fact, there was a time uh, spoken of in the Book of Mormon where it said many false Christs and false prophets uh, came. And so um, that actually occurred uh, even before latter days as well. And so we know this is kind of uh, a trick that uh, the enemy uses. Uh, and so it's just something to be aware of and, and to look out for. So this is another one um, saying similar things in 2 Corinthians. It says, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And so sometimes, just like those weeds, the enemy will try to portray himself as, as right. Uh, and we, maybe we touched a little bit upon this when we talked about how you know, many churches have sort of gotten off onto uh, another path and, and they, they, they wear the name of, of Christ as their, their belief, but maybe they're not really uh, practicing the doctrine of Christ in its fullness. And so, you know, it, it's a stark warning, I think, for us to, to think about. And I have this one uh, from 2 Timothy. It says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, petty, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. So I, I wanted to pause here maybe for some discussion. Well, why is this um, something that we should be uh, aware of? Or maybe another question to think about or discuss is how should we respond uh, to these sorts of things going on in the world today? Well, I think there it just, it's, it says what to do, you know, turn away. It isn't necessarily... You know, it's certainly want to follow the spirit to know, you know, what to say or what to do in those situations. But I think, um, you know, there's going to be opposition. And so I think we have to be, you know, keenly aware of, one, what the word says. And if people are speaking not what the word says or trying to discount what the word says or saying things that go against what the word says, then those individuals, you know, we can't, to listen to that is just gonna, you know, maybe fuel more disbelief in our own minds or something. And so I think it's important to just recognize it and then yeah. let it go, I guess. Okay. Great. Brother Jeremy. Yeah. This scripture that you have, look at the list. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a list. <laughs> look at the list. There's over 15 items that it's warning us to be mindful of. Yeah. You know, it, <laughs> this list is, I don't know what word to use, but I like to say it's shocking, but it's not. I mean, uh, if you look at this list, it's saying certain things that certain people may do to, to just fool us. And we need to uh, be on the lookout for this. And 
if it's somebody that's going to be doing something false before us, uh, we need to be in sync with God and his spirit to be able to recognize these things. Amen. And we also need to be mindful to say something. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, um, you know, it kind of relates. And, and it, you know, it, I, I, I praise God. I mean, I just feel like this sort of just bounced into my head, but this idea of pairing truth and discernment uh, and speaking truth and also recognizing truth you know, for a couple of reasons, like you just said, we need to be able to uh, take a stand and, um, you know, know how to contend with things that are false. Um, and uh, I think was also sort of mentioned just the ability to tell the difference so that we're not deceived ourselves. Uh, and I think a lot of times when you know, I mean, one of the latter day prophecies is that um, you know, evil shall be called good and good shall be called evil, right? And so we really need to be sure that what we call good and what we're following is actually good. So I think there's quite a, quite a bit of uh, attempt to lead people down a path that appears good on the surface, but uh, it, isn't really leading them in a good direction at all. Uh, so there are uh, some things here that are mentioned, um, you know, that, that we need to watch out for, and it says to turn away from those things. Um, and, and interestingly, it also, we've kind of gotten a couple of things to look for that would indicate truth. One of them was, if it proclaims Christ, right? But then we also read, well, even evil will sometimes proclaim Christ. And so what else can we look for to make sure that, one, we're following Christ, and two, that we're following what's actually authentically of Christ and not just pretending? And so I think the key line here is that there is a form of godliness or those who would maybe proclaim Christ, but they deny the power thereof. And I feel like that's a very significant statement because um in the presence of truth and of the the lord and his gospel you will also find his power you will find his manifestations in the forms of healing of his spirit of miracles of revelation and you know however else the lord decides to reveal his his his, his himself right and so that's a key to look for and it's certainly a key to watch out for if someone's saying well uh well anything to to the contrary right that that god doesn't perform miracles today or that you know we can't put our faith in his ability to deliver or to uh provide or to heal or to speak and reveal brother jeremy yeah um, at, at one of our men's nights when men get together to um, study the scripture, um, Brother Ike related an experience with Isaac Smith. Uh, at one of the campouts, a man came to the campout, and I, if, if I can remember right, he claimed to be the choice ear. Mm. And he talked to Brother Isaac and Maybe, maybe a couple other brothers and uh, and brother I decided to bring him you know to bring him introduce him to I think it was brother Joe Malantoni and maybe someone else and as soon as uh, uh, brother Ike introduced him to brother Joe Malantoni brother Joe said you are not the choice here and I don't I can't remember exactly what he said after that but he he discerned that this man was false. He was a uh, trying to pretend to be something he was not. Mm. So it's, it's, it is very important to have discernment of the intents of everyone that you are affiliated with or meet. Yeah. Yeah. 
Can I just ask, what is the definition of incontinent? Like, are we talking medical condition here? Any thoughts on that one? That's the only one that's kind of got me. I, 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 I mean, out of, out of the dictionary, it, it, it's, a, it's a lack of self-restraint. Um, yeah. So when you think about it, that's true from a health sense. <laughs> if you have a physical affliction, uh, then you, you lack control over your body. But in a spiritual sense uh, or a behavioral sense, it's, it can be applied in a similar way when you lack self-control over um, or self-restraint you know, to avoid temptations and that sort of thing. It's kind of like lacking temperance. Yeah. Like you're unable to like control your emotions, your reaction to something. Sure, um, could be temper, uh, right? Yeah, good question. Brother Jeremy. Sure, go ahead. I was going to say that all of those things, I guess my brother said there's 15 things there that we have to be mindful of is scary because reading back the one of the first scriptures you gave us in first john four, fourth chapter the third verse says that this is the spirit of the antichrist yes. whereof you even heard that it should come and even now already is in the world and we do we already see all these things in the world but that's what makes it so scary is that we have to be able to discern it and i think that's where we have to pray and and depend on God to help us discern it correctly. Yeah, that's a great uh, point to you know to to bring out you know that scripture in the Book of Mormon that says all things have opposition, and you know it's it's just it helps you to understand very clearly what it is that we're dealing with when we understand that there is a spirit of Christ and a spirit of Antichrist. And to understand that these things are uh, opposed and that there's a, a force or a spirit out there that would try to draw us away from Christ, just like there is one that is of the Lord to draw us to him. And so, um, and I think as these scriptures in large part have to do with the last days, one of the things that we are encouraged to do, uh, both in scripture and certainly as of late, you know, from the leadership of the church, you know, from the apostles, is to trim our lamps in this day and age, you know, that we might um, remember that this is a time that's approaching uh, when the Lord would establish his kingdom and, and Prior to that, what he's looking for is a people who are true to him, even the bride of Christ, which is his church. And uh, we were talking about this in a recent uh, different meeting that, you know, when a bride gets ready for her wedding day, she's uh, making everything just so. It's, she wants it to be perfect. And that's how we should look at ourselves, that we might be like those wise virgins prepared and making ourselves perfect for the coming of our Lord. And so we're anticipating that in the midst of having all of this opposition. And so as we draw ourselves closer to the Lord in this day and age, knowing the times that we're in, we are preparing ourselves for the Lord, but we're also strengthening ourselves that we might be ready for this time period, that we would be close enough to the Lord to feel his spirit and to understand uh, by his gift of discernment what is of him and what isn't. And so I think this is a, it's a timely message to think about because we see more and more, um, and, and that's probably a good segue into this next slide, uh, confusion 
and I mentioned this, I guess, earlier, but, um, you know, there's a lot of confusion over what is good and what is moral at this, uh, at this point. And I would say, you know, that the world is losing their ability at this point to discern between good and evil. Um, and, and people are intentionally confusing the two that they might uh, justify what is not good, what is not moral and righteous. And so when it says this in Second Nephi, it says, whoa, I said that, that would call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And so we see a warning here against those who would try to um, confuse or, uh, you know, disguise evil for good. Yeah, I see my dad has his hand up, um, but I think it's it's also really important to um, understand that the spirit of the Antichrist has been since the beginning. You know, we since the garden was uh, closed off, um, that spirit has you know anything that that opposes Christ has been since the beginning, and that's why Noah. <laughs> Uh, had to rescue his family because the rest of the world had chosen anti-God. Um, and then, you know, we did a study on this in ladies group, um, this concept of calling good evil and evil good, that's the definition of iniquity. And I see a lot of that now. You know, you, you look at just, I mean, I don't spend much time in the news, but you just look at you know, what's out there. And it's just, it's devastating. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the comment. Thanks for pointing out that I'm missing someone. When I'm using my iPad to share my screen, I actually can't see anyone's picture. So, um, yeah, did you have a comment or? We can't hear you, dad. Given the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, and discernment of that Spirit. Yeah. I look at it as being in a in a meeting or at a camp out or a place where there's a bunch of things together. And when the Lord's Spirit comes in, what do you feel? You feel so good. You feel so enriched because the Lord has looked your way or looked the branches way so that He can enter in. And when you feel that, don't don't we all feel like oh we could stay in that kind of a uh, scenario forever but our our bodies can't our bodies can't i've been in campouts and conferences where you just can't you can't stay there very much longer you you're, it's overwhelming it's overpowering and the spirit is so thick that you can almost cut it with a knife we've been in meetings like that and campouts like that that it's undeniable that god's spirit you know is there with us continually but in some cases it's there so thick and so prevalent that yeah strong that you can't you can't stay in that kind of a spirit not in these mortal bodies maybe in the in the body that we're going to receive we can stay there forever you know yeah i think one of the things about that is that you, you don't feel any doubt in those moments because it's it's overwhelming um so the power of the extent of that is is compelling and, and it's convincing to you that this is of God. And so if we feel something less than that or something that you know is is of doubt or confusion, we we need to test that and, and pray about that and and uh, stack that message up against the word and see that you know see if it holds uh, true to the word. Um, and I think a lot of the issue, of course, in, in the, the world is that without the knowledge of the word, they're not able to um, recognize what is of God or, or of God's sense of, of morality and what isn't. You know, Brother Jeremy, with what Brother Bill just shared, uh, you know, in a meeting, in a branch meeting, in a conference and uh, camp out, uh, feeling those emotions that he talked about, you know, uh, to me, that, that's the easy part <laughs> because we're there. That's what we're there for. 
with what you're talking about with all these uh, things that we're speaking about here, to me, it's a situation is how are we going to react or are we going to not- notice these things that are contrary to the spirit when we're by ourselves? Mm. Uh, are we going to be mindful of that situation? Uh, because again, something may appear to us to be good for us. It may appear to be a wonderful thing. It may appear to be beautiful, but it may not be, it may not be the right thing. Uh, again, something that comes sort of with a, a mask ab- uh, before it to fool us. And, and that's where we need to be able, as uh, Brother Bill said, or somebody else said about, you know, we all have the Holy Ghost. Uh, we need to use that. And uh, again, you know, I've said this before in other classes and other uh, sermons, we need to be in tune with God each and every day, uh, each and every hour. Uh, you know, when I say those things, some people say, well, wait a minute, brother, when I, how can you be in tune with God each and every hour, especially when you're working eight to 10 hours a day? Okay, okay here's my first question. Did you pray before you left the house? Uh, when a, when, when a difficult meeting was about to come up that you're being called in, did you take the few minutes to at least pray before you went to that meeting? Uh, did you rush through lunch and not pray for your food? I mean, we can be in tune with God every day for several hours of the day if we take the time to remember to do those things. You know, it's very easy for us to get real busy and get going next thing you know, six, seven, eight hours went by and we never communicated with God. That's easy to do if we let it happen. The question is, do we do that? And, and we need to be mindful of our surroundings. Uh, you know, it's it's like the it's like the old story that you hear about the individual that's an alcoholic, and he finally got better, and he's finally good. But he wants to go save his friend at the bar that's an alcoholic. The last place that person needs to go to is a bar. You know, his intent is good. But he's not the one that needs to go in there to save his friend. You know, I'm thinking um, those 15 items that were in that one piece of scripture that, that Juan pointed out, and just what we're saying now, our ability to kind of stay the course in, in this world that we live in, because, um, you know, those things come at us every day from all sides. And when I go back to Lehi's dream of the tree, and there was four groups of people that were, three groups were pressing forward towards the tree. One group was feeling their way and uh, they all had to go through a midst of darkness. And uh, the one group that made it was the group that held on to the rod of iron to get to Lynette's point of knowing the word and understanding it enough that when you're in any environment that you're in, you know, that, that ability to understand God's way comes to you so you can hang on. Otherwise, you know, you can hang on. You know, there was one group of people that hung on all the way, made it through the midst of darkness, and then they let go, and they drifted away as well. So I think that, you know, that, that's one of the benchmarks, I think, that, that allows us the discernment that we need in this world that we live in, because uh, there's so many things pulling us this way and that way. I mean, it's, you know, it's like the politicians and all that. If you listen to any one of those guys, they're the right way, you know? You know, but but there's no rod of iron in any of those guys to hang on to that's going to get you to where you got to get. You know, but you listen to the news and you see what goes on. There's so many people that blindly lead themselves or follow these people, you know, till they're off the cliff, if, if you will, in a way. I think there's just a, such a type and shadow of that dream in relationship to discernment that we need in this day and time. So and I, I think that that's uh, kind of relevant. You know, one of the things that I was sharing with you, and, and some of you may have already heard this, when I was employed with EDS for almost 30 years and then HP bought them out, and so I'm now working for HP now as part of that for about three years. And I remember the week before I got let go, I'm at my desk and I hear the spirit say to me, pack your things. And my first thought was, What? <laughs> pack my things. I mean, am I going on a trip? What's going on? This and that. And, and, and the truth was, I didn't have much at my desk back then, only because for like the six or seven years before that, layoffs were going on and people were walked out and, you know, you'd see people couldn't take some of their things under HP at the time. 
they wouldn't even allow the women to go back to their desk to get their purse. That's how strict they were. So when I heard the spirit say, pack your things, I thought, okay, you know, I'm, I'm listening, Lord. I'd put a few things in my backpack, take them to the car at lunch, uh, go have lunch, come back that afternoon, take a few more things, just, you know, two or three things. It wasn't like I packed everything. So it's, so it's noticeable. The, that actually happened on a Monday, if I remember right. It was actually on a Monday. Second day, the next, the next day, the second thing happened, pack your things. But okay, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? Third day, pack your things. And I did. On that fourth day, I was going to a meeting. Uh, my boss and I were supposed to have a meeting on Tuesday. It got rescheduled for Thursday. I was walked into an office. I saw my old boss. My, my boss at the time from HP was actually uh, officed in in Canada, in Calgary, I think it was. And we we're going to do a video conference. My old EDS manager was asked to join because he was on site and present to help walk me out. That Thursday, Thursday or Friday, I think it was, I was walked out after 33 years. I was told, you did nothing wrong, but a group got hit, you're the one. Uh, my thing was, I'm glad I listened to God. Because two things happened. I wasn't worried about the possessions, but he slowly prepared me for some news that was going to be very, very hard to take. But he was already speaking to me. That's the kind of tune we need to be in for when either the Holy Spirit is talking to us, God speaking to us, or somebody's trying to fool us. We need to be able to recognize it and see it coming. Uh, but the Holy Ghost will always help us with those things. It's interesting that we've uh, kind of heard some stories about work and you know I, I was thinking too how compelling some of these you know ideas or deceptions can be and you know sometimes you go to work for example and you have uh, you're surrounded by you know just the ambition right of the the business and you're trying to be a good employee and you're hearing this message of, you know, do this or that to uh, further the, the progress towards the goals of the organization. And, and you begin to get swallowed up in it, perhaps. And, and those around you are, you know, very, uh, uh, certainly very taken by uh, the goals and, and the, the drive, you know, to succeed and, you know, that's just one example of how an agenda or, you know, maybe you might say a spirit can come along and, and be, you know, if you're not careful, we could be swept up in, in the majority and, and those around us who are all chasing after the things that the world would, would set uh, before us as, as valuable. And so we have to have a very deep conviction to know how to contend with falsehood. And the way to contend with falsehood is the truth and the word is the truth. And so when you can say, look, I understand that the, the goal here at work is to get ahead at all costs, but I also understand that the word of God says this, this, and this, and I'm going to anchor myself to that. And we have to be able to do that. We have to be able to have that level of conviction to stand against the crowd, to stand as maybe the one in, in the group who, who um, isn't following the tide, right? And, and maybe, um, maybe many times in life, you're the only one who is willing to, um, or able to, or, or knowledgeable uh, to, to be different. And I think we are different. Um, you know, many times in the scriptures, uh, the prophets would come and they would warn everyone, hey, we've all gone off the path, people, and you're all messed up. And if you don't get it together, God's going to lay the smack down in so many words, right? <laughs> and so, and what happens? No one listens. They don't believe. They don't take it seriously. And, you know, we have to be able to recognize that uh, 
you know, in those moments, we've got to listen. Like Brother Juan listened at work. And most people don't. And in the stories of the scriptures, when judgment comes and iniquity reaches a point where God says enough is enough, often what would happen is the majority would be destroyed. And what would be left was a remnant. And the remnant in scriptures is sometimes in those stories, it's like 10% of the group. And so, you know, that's um, often, you know, how it played out especially in the Old Testament. And so we have to realize that though we might be surrounded by people who disagree, it doesn't mean we're wrong. And so, um, and I, I, this came to mind too, and I thought it was kind of interesting. Brother uh, John D. Batista mentioned this the other night. He was opening a class and he was saying, okay, I want everyone to just take a few deep breaths and relax. And we're going to get into the word. And, you know, we're telling you tonight, right, to get more solid in the word, spend more time understanding and meditating upon the things of God. And when the flesh hears that, sometimes we're like, oh, that sounds like work. I just worked all day and now i got to work some more, you know. And, and I liked what John said, because when you do it right, it should be enjoyable. If you're getting into the word with this sense of dread and obligation, you're not going to be blessed in that spirit, right? But if you just embrace that as you open the word of God, the Lord is about to bless you with something wonderful that is going to stand the test of time. And everything that you see going on in the world today, the current events, the politics, your job, uh, the economy, it's all going to come and go. And when it goes, the word will be left. And so I think that we should have that excitement to embrace the opportunity that lies before us to open the word of God and to realize how it will enrich our lives and position us in a place of strength to withstand the storms. And so we know the word is saying the storms are coming, the deceptions are coming, and they're even going to be compelling and enticing and they're going to appeal to the flesh. And we need to be that minority who listens to that warning and is ready. I have a magnet that um, it says if you don't, if that I have that, um, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Yeah. And um, I've always been very grateful that uh, when I was baptized, uh, for me, I feel like the, the, one of the greatest gift I could have gotten was discernment because the, the Lord lets me know I can tell by the, if the hair on my arm stands up or if, um, I mean, you just know what's right and what's wrong, you know, and um, unfortunately I had a group of uh, young people. I was, I was fortunate to be very grounded uh, with the young people in the church and um when there was a group of them that did the mass exodus here uh quite a few years ago uh, one of them said to me uh, did i want to know why they were leaving i said no i don't want to i do not want to uh i don't want to know i don't want to hear it um you know um how about we just agree to disagree and, um, you know, those people I have still uh, maintained a contact with, I love them dearly. I hope that, um, you know, a two by four will knock them to their senses, um, something to sh ra shake, rattle and roll. But I just have, I have never wanted to hear it because um, was it, um, was it my, who it was um, Tim? um you know tim um he died you know who i'm talking about billy you know not capone capone, capone. Tim, remember he had that dream about the thin um that dream and he was being pulled back and forth on the fence there and then when he turned around and and realized uh that satan it, all it was was a silk strand so, um, you know, I'm, I'm grateful. And I, I think that as long as we 
uh, continue. If you hear something that doesn't sound right, I say to the kids, pray about it. Because just because it comes from, um, let, I don't mean to sound offensive, but let's say it comes from the pulpit <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> you know, you have to, you have to, and, and um, it's questioned, then you're better off praying about it. Go ask the Lord to show you what's the correct answer on that. Because um, we can all be led astray. And I, hey, we can all go down a road that we don't all want to go down. Um, the key is getting back to the road, right? But um, I think that the one of the, the greatest gift God gave us was that, that, discernment and the and the opportunity to choose because even when we have that discernment and if we choose the wrong one and we know it's the wrong one well you know woe unto you because it, it's that much more painful to get out of i would just point out you mentioned um the gift again and i think that's a good emphasis to just know that it's something we can pray for you know that we would pray for the gift of discernment and to your point, um, nobody is above reproach or above deception. And if we think that, oh, I, I really know the word and I know the gospel. And, you know, what does the scripture warn us about? It says the elect will fall. Uh, some of those who were once, you know, established, maybe lose sight. Um, so, yeah, these are good things, you know, to uh, to consider and think about. And it's kind of a nice setup, actually, for. I just wanted to share in the last few minutes, we have um, a, a few more slides, uh, starting with, uh, with this one. Um, and this is, uh, again, a kind of a good uh, example of the Old Testament and, you know, so things that are false. Um, oh, I guess I oh, skipped fun. over this one. Uh, so before we get to that, just real quickly, the songs of Zion uh, talk about this uh, idea as well, how sin is made to look beautiful. You know, it says here, it's painted like a picture and made to be beautiful and truly fine, but underneath it's uh, mocking what's true, right? And it's deceiving. It's putting forth a grand illusion. And just like we read earlier in the scriptures, how uh, you know, Satan made himself as an angel of light. Here he says, masquerading as the light. So it, it warns us saying, be careful, precious children, lest your robes be not so white. And, um, you know, so we have to rid ourselves of the small sins that we think are okay and, and justified. That's exactly what the enemy wants to use to get in there and begin to steer our feet off the path with those, with those small sins. So, and this uh, picture, I just thought it was interesting because, you know, again, the scriptures do warn us of a time when false Christs will come. And it actually says that not only will uh, false prophets and false Christs come, but they'll even have the power to work wonders and signs. And here in the story of, of Moses, of course, we saw that. We saw that the, you know, the, the, the magicians of Pharaoh could, uh, turn their rods into snakes, just like Moses could. Uh, but of course, we know that uh, Moses' staff, which became a snake, consumed the other snakes. So it just gives you some level of degree, you know, to which the enemy will go to try and mimic or, or deceive. And so we do have to have a lot of care and caution to think about what we're subscribing to and believing and making sure by prayer and by uh, faithfulness, by looking for God's um, confirmation and by the scriptures that we're correct, that we're correct in our, our under, understanding. And so um, I wanted to point out a couple of verses along that path uh, of thought. It says here in Psalms, teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path. Because of my enemies, deliver me uh, not over unto the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. And so the key statement David makes here is when he says this, I had fainted 
unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And so, you know, in this, to paraphrase, it's kind of saying uh, there are enemies and they are uh, rising up against us. And in the midst of that sort of crowd, when we're feeling alone, uh, we feel like David when he says, I would have fainted, except that I looked up to the Lord and beheld his goodness and waited upon him, even though I was maybe teased or the minority or the odd man out or tempted perhaps to depart from the truth. I waited upon the Lord and he gave me courage and strength and lifted me up and brought me through. Uh, and I think this verse is sometimes our situation, you know, that we need to uh, trust in God, even though uh, the whole world around us seems to be uh, thinking differently than we are. And so I, I wanted to kind of leave us with this thought. Um, if we're going to be discerning people, then I think these are some of the traits that we should look to embrace. So discerning people uh, choose God, right? We have choices before us. It could be tempting to choose the wrong things, um, to go after what the flesh wants or what the world wants, but discerning people who look for the right choices, they're going to choose God and they're going to make wise and prayerful choices in life. And, and they value the importance of truth, which is where we started in, you know, our first lesson. And I think, uh, you know, if we underestimate the significance and importance of truth and understanding, uh, we're really missing out on something huge, something significant. And so we need to just assess properly the importance, the value of, of truth. And I, they also listen and pay attention. And I think, um, uh, I don't know if it was Brenda or someone else who was saying this, but you know, be attentive to what's going around, on around you. Are you uh, sensing evil? Are you noticing and observing what's happening uh, in people that you're surrounded by? Uh, listen to what they're saying, pay attention to what they're doing, and discern whether it's good fruit or bad fruit. Uh, we talked about that last week, about how a good fruit comes from a good tree, and how good words come from a good heart. And so we have to be spiritually sensitive to understand what's happening in that, uh, in that uh, level, you know, all around us. And uh, I, I put a couple other thoughts here that they don't settle, right? If something isn't quite right, if something isn't pure, then it's not good enough, right? We're looking for the highest uh, possible aim, which is to be Christ-like and, and to pursue those things that are perfect and, and good from the Lord. And I think discerning people finally are the kinds of people you want as friends, and we should be those sorts of individuals, you know, good friends to others, because if we have a discerning word of wisdom to share, uh, that's a blessing to people around us. Um, and so uh, all of that leads us up to this, that we would be, especially in this uh, time frame, kind of like these rocks. You know, the waves are coming, the storms might come, but those rocks are not going anywhere. And in this verse, it says, uh, therefore, I would that ye should uh, be steadfast and immovable, always abounding in good works, that Christ the Lord God omnipotent may seal you his, that you may be brought to heaven, that ye may have everlasting salvation and eternal life through wisdom and power and justice and mercy of him who created all things in heaven and earth, who is God above all. Amen. And so that's the image we can uh, maybe leave off with tonight, that we might uh, uh, be steadfast and immovable. 
That's Any, one of uh, my favorite verses. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> That's the end of King Benjamin's speech. I love it. Um, one of the things uh, that really, like, that's one of the things that I can say, like, it's never a good idea necessarily to follow people because you always want to follow Christ because everyone's going to make mistakes and they're all, I mean, myself being foremost, you're going to have bad days and it's going to be bad and you're going to be a bad influence <laughs> at some point or another. But those people that I found to be mentors in the gospel like good mentors in the gospel use the word a lot in their conversation use the word a lot to to take stands on situations or issues or you know comments or questions they use they use they knew the word and they used it and i think those are the people that i tried to like like I said, you don't want to really follow anybody because Christ is the only one to follow. But I think those are the ones that I really wanted to understand. Like, I would spend more time with them and be like, okay, so, you know, what do you think about this? Or how does, you know, what does God think about that? Or, you know, those are the types of things that I would, like, I was, I was like drawn to, like almost like a magnet because I wanted to better understand the Lord. And when you're talking to people, you can really tell, you know, those that, that know the word and use the word a lot in their conversation were the ones I was like, okay, I, I recognized it. And I was like, okay, so you can kind of, you want truth is truth is truth. The word is truth. And that's really the, all that it really is true is because he's, he's built on truth. He's made of truth. The word became flesh, right. And dwelt among us. So that's, that's where we have to place our foundation. Everything else is going to be tossed like the waves in the sea. Brother Jerry. Yeah. Um, I know that there have been many young brothers and sisters who we looked up to who, who worked hard for God. Um, and they passed away, they were young still, and they passed away from by accident or with sickness. And we, we asked, we, we wondered, why, why, why is God taking them? You know, they were doing a great work. They're doing, and there's a verse in, in the book of Isaiah, the 57th chapter, the first verse. It said, the righteous perish, perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. So he's sparing them from, <laughs> you know, who knows how they would have reacted, you know, who how <laughs> to, and of course, we have that to look forward to as long as we survive live mortally yeah uh so there's going to be some trying <laughs> uh situation and moments and yeah yeah great comments and i love uh you know to what uh, lynette said about just in incorporating the word more into our conversation and you know it, it um there's so much richness there that could be part of our our daily lives more and of course discernment leads you to good choices right and just like that song of Zion you know the small sins I mean make good choices even in the little things you know you turn on the tv you open up Netflix there's a choice <laughs> on what you're going to watch and what what does that choice lead you to um, a good spiritual day or a bad spiritual day and any other comments or thoughts yeah brother Juan with what Lynette was saying about the truth and the person using the word and so forth. You know, Book of John at the beginning, it says in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word, the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. You know, uh, when I heard Lynette speaking and what she was saying, all I was thinking, you know, she's, she's looking at people that you would like to emulate, 
to be able to, to follow what they're doing all that, and that's good. Uh, in one of the scriptures you were reading, it, it talked about good fruit and good fruit and bad fruit. Uh, sometimes we need to look for when there is no fruit. You know, that's another sign to look at. Uh, you know, we we all try to do good. We all try to live our lives the right way. Uh, you know, with what Lynette said, seeing people how they how they speak and what they bring up on that. There is never anything wrong with looking up to somebody. But we also need to remember that we as humans, we stumble and fall. We stumble and fall and we will make mistakes. And a lot of times, and I'm not saying let me that you were saying this, but sometimes we put too much uh, emphasis on a certain individual. And when they fall, we're like thinking, oh, what happened? What's going on? You know, we're all human. We're going to make mistakes. I've made them. Uh, and when we make mistakes, we need to forgive mistakes. And we need to forgive people when they do that. Uh, you know, the truth is the truth. Um, you know, what Lynette said is correct. That when somebody uses the word of God to settle an issue or to uh, answer a question to somebody else, you cannot argue with that answer. <laughs> the word of God. You know, if you don't like the answer that person gave, whether that person is a brother or a sister or a minister or a deacon or a deaconess, or doesn't have a title but other than brother or sister in Christ, if you don't like that answer that he gave you out of the word or the Bible of the Mormon, then you go argue with God and see what he tells you. And he's going to set you straight, as Jeremy said earlier, somebody else. You know, uh, we need to be mindful of of everything that goes on in our lives. And we need to remember to, you know, if there's a question you want to know the answer to, go to those two books. You're going to find it in there. You're going to find it in there. There's a choice you need to make. There's a decision you need to make. If you're not sure which way to go. You need to take it to God. You need to take it to God and he will I could, I could sit here for a couple hours and tell you about all the times that I had to make a decision. I wasn't sure what to do, and I went to God. And the decision he told me to make, of course, was the right one. In some cases, when he told me what to do, I'm thinking, are you crazy? Are you crazy what you're asking me to do, God? And I did it, and it worked out. It worked out. You know, uh, he doesn't do anything wrong. And he's looking out for a benefit. You know, he's looking out for us and taking care of us. And he will do that if we're like in that uh, picture that Jeremy talked about, those uh, rocks on the shore that, you know, do not break loose. Hang on strong. And as Walt said earlier, you know, hang on to that rod of iron. I think it's also important that when someone like, um, we had a gar a. Uh, fellow who came and did some landscaping for us and he was a so-called Christian and so when I would question anything he'd say oh Brenda ye of little faith or he'd throw out these bible verses at me and uh, by the end of it I was ready to uh, 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 tell him and uh, ring him around the neck and tell him to quit you know using yourself as a Christian because he was not by anyways um I want to go back to a sorry I digressed on that one because you were saying about you know but there are people who loosely use these things and you have to either bite your tongue because it's not worth making a response to or um, you know I should have I guess I could have come up with Bible verses to throw at him but it was like casting my pearls before the swine but um, Anyways, I was going to say that when you started, you, we started off with, um, you know, not wanting not, to, you know, if you've got something wrong, you tell people that you've got something wrong. Well, I think we do that, but we do that into in small, in small groups and people that we trust. Because like when I post on Facebook, I never post um, anything negative or anything. I mean, I could have... Um, written all over woe is me I've got I, I've got breast cancer blah 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 but I didn't the only as close as I got was I put a rooster on there that his feathers looked like it had been 
thrown through the through a washer machine one day because um, if I believing that God is going to take care of me, why would I be posting all woe is me and and all of this, right? So, um, and I'm not trying to live vicariously through Facebook. However, I want to people that knew that I had had I was going through this, that I could still find positive things and to find the joy in um, being alive and, you know, being given this illness. Because, um, you know, to me, I don't know, I, I just can't profess to everybody that I, I have um, when things are going wrong. I only go to a few select that I know that I trust with and that we are going to pray for me and are going to um, that the good Lord's going to um, work with us together to move forward. Do you know what I mean? You know, so I, I, I don't mean to, I'm not meaning to contradict you. I don't mean it like that, um, Brother Jeremy, at all. I'm just saying that sometimes we, we can't, if we were to spill our guts, it would be a big flat across the screen you know and nobody really wants to see that hear that or really cares really other than what? if you're a brother or sister and then you know then they want to know too much information tmi so it's just called you just know who um that that's a discernment again as to who you can go to and who you can who you can trust that is going to be non-judgmental or is going to pray for you or you know what I mean? And I'm not, does that make me, does that make me not be truthful? No, I agree completely. I think that's just good wisdom. And uh, it's a great added point to make, you know, that we confide in people that we trust because, you know, the, the scripture you pointed out is a good one. You know, why do we not cast our pearl before the swine, you know, it talks about, you know, when we don't do that, people will turn and rend you, right? And they'll use that information against you. So I, I think that's completely supported scripturally. I, I think that's good wisdom. You know, with what uh, Brenda said, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, with, with going just to certain people. There are certain people that we will trust. And here's the thing with trust. If somebody comes to you and says, you know, I want to share something with you in confidence. You know, we need to retain that confidence. You know, somebody approached me years ago and says, I need to talk to you. Don't say nothing to anybody, but I need to tell you about this. And I need to trust you with this. I said, as long as you didn't do something illegal, like kill somebody, let's continue the conversation. And they looked at me like, what? You know, we need to be mindful of the responsibility we carry when somebody entrusts us with information, okay? Uh, it takes years to build trust. It takes a second to lose it. And it can take years to get it back if you ever get it back. Uh, be mindful of that. Um, and again, I just wanna say, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here with you guys on, on these evenings. Um, Brother Jeremy, you've been doing an excellent job with what you've been doing with these classes. And I've enjoyed the comments from everybody. And uh, I hope to be able to meet a lot of you down the road in future endeavors and, and other meetings down the road and maybe gatherings that we can get together when this whole garbage goes away about wearing masks and all. Can't wait for the day to hug all of you. Amen. Jeremy, uh, another great job tonight. Um, and then I think it's, uh, you know, discernment is something like patience. I think we all have to work on that constantly. And I, I think the scriptures and the reference and the conversations tonight that we've had, but it brought that to mind because I don't know if it's something that we would ordinarily think about, but now we have something to think about this week. And as, as we go forward from here, you know, how can I get the Lord's discerning spirit in most everything I do. And as, as we said, you know, we're all human beings. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to mess it up. God expects us to, but he also expects us to lean on him to understand the right way to do things and get things done. So um, great lesson, great focus tonight. And I appreciate everybody's 
comments and support for uh, Jeremy's hard work on this lesson tonight. So uh, it's getting late. I think that uh, we should probably close it down now and, uh, and uh, look forward to Sunday or next Tuesday and we'll be at it again. So uh, thanks for your participation. Uh, Mike, good to see you today. How are things in Ridgecrest? It's awesome. It's um, a little chilly. Yeah. But it's it's no snow. Tell us, still what here. Tell us what chilies is so the people in Fort Worth can understand. Yeah, well, I'm grateful to be with electricity and with a with a war with a heater. Yeah. So I, I thank God for that. Yeah, amen. So, Good to see you tonight. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Good lesson. And you all get a break from me next week because I think our plan is to have uh, some testimony. Uh, next week so think about what you would uh, like to share next week about what god has done for you in this uh month yeah you'd need it you need at least a week amen <laughs> good praise god you know our sunday meetings are our sunday meetings are probably uh best with the testimonies we have so jeremy and i talked about this about uh just trying a different format one night of the month maybe or something like that to talk about it how God's been busy in our life, you know, and, uh, you know, it's, it's what we can do to help uplift one another because, you know, maybe sometimes things aren't going good for me, but when I hear what he's doing for you, it gets me over the hump, you know, those types of things. So we'll see how it goes next week and then we'll go from there. Okay. So, uh, brother Juan, would you close us in prayer tonight? Sure. I'd be glad to, uh, dear Lord. Uh, we thank you Lord for the lesson that brother Jeremy brought tonight, Lord, the discernment to be able to know what, what is taking place or what's going on to be able to recognize the things that we're supposed to recognize and be able to see what's coming at us, Lord, and being able to know whether somebody is being truthful or deceitful. That is so important that we be able to do that in our lives spiritually and, and physically and everything that happens, Lord, that nobody will be able to hurt us in a physical way, Lord, or more importantly, in a spiritual way, or, or be able to argue with us and, and get us into a battle or into an argument that we shouldn't even be in. We need to recognize these things, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for, for these meetings. I ask you to continue to, to inspire a brother with the uh, lessons that he brings forth, Lord, and continue to bring all these people together so we can be able to know your word, read your word, and discuss it, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Continue to keep everybody safe. Continue to keep everybody well, Lord. And with those that may be dealing with a, uh, a health situation, continue to be with them and help them, Lord, and, and more importantly, heal them. Heal them, take care of them, Lord. And uh, until we meet again, Lord, keep everybody safe. I ask you all these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. Amen. 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 Well, I got to get off. I still got work to do before.